Masterpieces are outstanding creations worthy of a place in history. They are the works of art we can't stop thinking and talking about. Art's meant to make a difference. These are pieces that continue to do so long after the artist is gone. I'm Lady K Flo. This is where I give you my quick takes on art pieces I call the masters. A Sunday on La Grande Jatte by George Seurat. Why is the painting A Sunday on La Grande Jatte an emblem of impressionist zeitgeist? You know a painting's hot stuff when an entire Broadway musical is devoted to it. But pop references aren't the only reason to check out A Sunday on La Grande Jatte. It's a marvel of color and genuity. As a child, I saw the show, Sunday in the Park with George, on PBS. Funny enough, it wasn't the extraordinary performances that struck me. It was the painting. This glorious canvas plays the protagonist. That's because the whole show's about Surratt's obsession with painting this. It was the main object of his heartfelt desire. He wasn't great at romance. But French painter Seurat knew he could make a masterpiece. That's how he yearned to create a legacy. His methodical approach gave the artist this certainty. Seurat invented pointillism. That's when one creates an image using tiny dots of color. Collections of careful print prick spots create rich, huge shapes. These shapes thus established Surat's scene. He used each color with meticulous precision, every inch plotted out to perfection. He did it this way because Surat believed amassed dots would make richer colors than brush strokes. So in a way, this painting was his experiment. Like a scientist in a lab, he worked with painstaking diligence to test his hypothesis. This masterpiece took him two years. Considering his fastidious technique and its enormity, that's not bad. The canvas spans about 7 by 10 feet. Can you imagine covering every millimeter of that with pinpricks? Two years seems like nothing with that mission in mind. But this also serves as evidence of his infatuation with the painting. He dotted at the canvas day and night. When he wasn't creating, he ruminated and even dreamed about a Sunday on Le Grand Jatte. Surratt's overwhelming attention paid off for us viewers. The painting remains a wonder of color and light. Dots give the piece a sense of excitement building. There's palpable underlying tension. I see it as Surratt's heart pulsing through the years to draw us in for a closer look. Shadow saturation versus pale sunlight create contrast and depth in this masterpiece. These distinctions are my favorite parts of A Sunday on the Grand Jot. It's thrilling how Surratt went against painter tradition. His composition recedes the pale colors off into the distance. They dissipate. Sailboats float on shimmering water in pastel, far off, fading into sunlight. So a sense of majestic light glimmers in the distance. It resonates hope and holiday. Meanwhile, the darkest painting parts stand at front in shadow. The stiff formality of the black-hatted pair dominates the foreground. They're dressed fancy and standing at attention. No spring in those steps. The foreground people are either workers or bourgeois. They're all business. Turns out this painting's like a mullet. All the fun's at the back. 
In fact, the further we look into the park, the more relaxed people get. At front, we've got toil and stiffness. Left and right, a monkey on a leash and a woman bending forward to work at something in her lap set two examples. But behind the stern couple with the monkey, we see a girl twirling far between them. Her red dress swirls with a circle turn. It's a tiny portrait of joy set back between the trees. Meanwhile, the people right up front seem like they could head off to work or boring errands at any moment. This points to a funny contradiction Surratt lived with at the time. His French friends were aghast at how much he worked on this painting. They found his work ethic offensive to their way of life. He endured constant mocking and criticism. This drove Surratt away from his social life and deeper into a Sunday on La Grand Jatte. Work thus became an escape for him. That contradictory dynamic lives in the painting as well. The painter evokes this by placing the workers and formal subjects close to his position at the canvas. He related the most to them, while Surratt put those who picnicked and played far away in the sunshine. That frivolity would have to wait for a day when he wasn't focused on filling an enormous canvas with tiny dots. But this was only one of many pointillist works Seurat painted. He knew he was onto something, even if the critics abhorred his innovative style. They did. Still, Seurat's gut about this painting was correct. He'd created an iconic masterpiece. A Sunday on Le Grand Jat. FAQs. How much is a Sunday on Le Grand Jat worth? $650 million. Of course, there's no real number for this. The Art Institute of Chicago would never auction off their crown jewel. But some billionaire collectors said what they'd be willing to pay if the finest masterpieces were for sale. They did this as a thought experiment for artsy.net in 2018. That's where I found this incredible number. But the painting's financial history reads as a lot more modest. When A Sunday on La Grand Jatte first sold in 1900, Casimir Bru paid 800 francs for it. He then gave it to his daughter, Lucy, She later sold it for about $20,000. The buyers were Frederick Clay and Helen Birch Bartlett of Chicago in 1924. The couple gave it to the Art Institute two years later. What style of painting is a Sunday on La Grand Jatte? Georges Seurat created a whole new style with this painting, pointillism. This was groundbreaking in 1884, but it was a new form of Impressionism. So, A Sunday on La Grand Jatte also prompted the art critic Félix Fénillon to coin the term Neo-Impressionism. This became one of the most significant movements in modern art. There's even more to this painter's style innovation than the painting, though. In 1899, Seurat restretched the canvas. He then created a dark border of red, orange, and blue dots. Seurat thus emphasized pointillism with a fresh way to contrast the painting against its white frame. Was the island of La Grand Jatte a real place? Not only is it real, It's spectacular. This lovely island sits right at the gates of Paris. About 4,000 people live on the island, but it's pretty tiny at only a mile long and about 650 feet wide. Ironically, the name of the island has the word big in it. The French translates to Island of the Big Bowl. Surratt elevated the island with this masterpiece, though. It became more than a big bowl. He created another world. 
The main way he did this was to transform an ordinary everyday moment into a moving experience. The palpable tension viewer's sense arises out of his zillion swirling dots. The 48 people in the painting express almost no emotions. Still, we feel something. That's because Surratt's emotions imbue this piece. The ferocious, obsessive heart he poured into a Sunday on La Grand Jatte moves us. It's a real place, and also wholly unreal. Masterpieces are written and recorded by Lady K-Flow. If you like this podcast and want to hear more like it, the greatest compliment you can give is to tell a friend. And subscribe to Lady K-Flow on Apple, Google, Stitcher, or wherever you listen to podcasts. Thanks. Visit LadyKFlo.com for all the goods. That's L-A-D-Y-K-F-L-O dot com.